Did you know that there are ways to invest in Bitcoin without holding actual Bitcoin? This is made possible through financial instruments like derivatives. So what are crypto derivatives? Well, that is what we're going to find out shortly, including some of the types of crypto derivatives like futures and perpetual contracts. So make sure to stick around to find out how they work and how they differ through simple explanations and practical examples. All right, let's get to it. So what are crypto derivatives? Okay, so the word derivative implies that it is derived from something, right? So in financial terms, derivatives are instruments that derive their value from an underlying asset. Crypto derivatives, therefore, derive their value from cryptocurrencies. They exist as financial contracts that two parties enter into to speculate on the underlying cryptocurrency's price on a future date. So, for example, a futures contract, which is a type of crypto derivative, will have the parties agree on a selling and buying price of the cryptocurrency in, say, one month, regardless of what the actual price will be. So, fast forward to one month later, the buyer may profit if the price of the underlying cryptocurrency went up and is now higher than the agreed price in the contract. And if the price of the underlying cryptocurrency goes down and lies below the agreed price, the seller will make a profit because the buyer will be purchasing the asset at a higher price than the actual market price. Now, don't worry, we'll look at actual examples shortly when we take a closer look at the types of crypto derivatives. Now, some of these types include options, swaps, futures, and perpetual contracts. Though for this video, we're gonna focus on the last two. These derivatives generally differ depending on the conditions in the contracts, as you'll see shortly. Let's start with futures. What is it? Well, as the name suggests, it is a legal agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a set price in the future. So before the parties get into the contract, they generally agree on two things. Things. One is the price at which they will exchange the asset in future, and two is the expiration date of the contract, which is simply the date the contract will be closed and settled. Okay, so let's find out how crypto futures work through a practical example. So say we have two crypto derivative traders, Mercy and Frank, who enter into a futures contract when the price of Bitcoin is $30,000. Now, Mercy is bullish on Bitcoin and she is confident that it will surpass $30,000 in a month, which is the expiration date of the contract. This means that she will have to pay $30,000 for one Bitcoin, regardless of Bitcoin's price in a month. Frank, on the other hand, is bearish on Bitcoin and has his reasons to believe that the price of Bitcoin will drop below $30,000 in the coming month. So, the contract from Frank's perspective commits him to selling Bitcoin at the agreed price, regardless of the assets price in a month. Okay, so let's look at different scenarios that'll determine which of the two makes a profit. So scenario one, it could be that Mercy was right and the price of Bitcoin does go up to say $37,000. So now she'll actually be purchasing Bitcoin from Frank at a discount. In this case, she'll make a profit of $7,000 without factoring fees. And then we have scenario two. So let's assume Mercy's prediction was wrong and the price of Bitcoin went down and is now trading at $25,000. Well, she'll still have to buy the Bitcoin from Frank at the agreed $30,000, meaning she makes a $5,000 loss while Frank makes a $5,000 profit. Now there's still some nuances to futures, but that's generally how it works. So then next, what about perpetual contracts? Well, perpetual contracts are more or less similar to futures, but with one distinct difference in that they have no expiration date. So investors can hold their positions however long they like. So for this reason, perpetual contracts have price pegs to ensure that they are traded at prices that are equal or almost equal to the spot market prices. And this price peg is maintained through a premium called a funding premium that is paid between the contract sellers and buyers to help keep the price in line with the spot market. So then let's find out how perpetual contracts work. So say that Mercy decides to invest in perpetual contracts this time when the price of Bitcoin is around $30,000. So since she predicts that the price of Bitcoin may go up, she decides to purchase a perpetual contract at $30,000. Now, after two months, the price of Bitcoin does indeed go up to 
$40,000. So Mercy, who is happy with the $10,000 profit, decides to close her position. Now, another thing about crypto derivatives like futures and perpetual contracts is that they offer leverage opportunities. So this simply means that it allows you to open a trading position that is bigger than your trading capital. So in Mercy's case, if a derivative exchange offers two times leverage, it means that her capital will now double and so will her profit. However, just as leverage amplifies profits, it also amplifies losses. So there is a very high risk of being liquidated. So let's quickly see how this may happen in Mercy's case. But before that, let's try to break down the following concepts first. That is the initial margin and the maintenance margin. Now the former describes the minimum value that needs to be paid to open a leverage position. So for illustration purposes, let's set this value at $30,000, meaning Mercy pays an initial margin of $30,000, which will act as her collateral to open a two times leverage position. The maintenance margin, on the other hand, is the minimum amount of collateral Mercy must hold to keep her trading positions open. If Bitcoin's prices move against Mercy and her margin balance drops below this level, she may be asked to add more funds to her account or be liquidated. Now that said, perpetuals are by far the most traded financial instruments in crypto. And at the time of making this video, the 24 hour volume of perpetuals was over 126 billion compared to futures 5 billion. So you might still wonder why not just hold actual Bitcoin if the price is pegged to it anyway. Well, these derivatives have an important function in crypto of managing risks. So say Mercy holds actual Bitcoin, but the price is going down. Since she is also a crypto derivative trader, she can decide to purchase a derivative contract whose value swings in the opposite direction of the Bitcoin she holds. Ideally, now she'll be able to offset the losses of her actual Bitcoin with the gains from the derivatives. Now, all in all, this collaboration between crypto and traditional financial instruments is a major step forward for digital assets in general. And it also gives investors an option to be involved with digital assets without necessarily holding them. So, are you going to experiment with crypto derivatives or are you going to stick with the good old hodling on for dear life tactic? Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So let us know in the comments. And as always, remember to like, subscribe and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya.